there's your prompt for today. Oh, and you're going to be sharing these with each other, so uh, don't write anything too personal. Remember, you only have 10 minutes to write the best paragraph you can.
All right, you have five minutes left for your perfect paragraph.
Raise your hand if you're finished with your paragraph. Okay, a couple more minutes to finish though. If you're not finished, hang tight. Sorry, if you are finished, hang tight. Quiet while people are finishing. Okay, time's up. All right, the reason that I wanted you to do that was one, to practice paragraph structure, but also because we are going to be looking at a grammar thing today, and I want us to be aware of when we are using this thing. So we're going to be talking about what are called idioms. Idioms are any time that a, you're using a phrase or a word that is kind of unintentionally metaphorical. So come up with, for example, come up with, what does that mean in like a literal language? What are we telling uh, someone to do when we say, hey, come up with an idea for you know this plan? Okay, it could be articulate. Here, actually, I'm gonna move to the front of the room here for a second. Nope. I need that still, huh? For my recording and the... Okay, well. We'll do our best. Come back. Come back. All right, so come up with. We could mean articulate, like actually say the thing out loud, right? Yeah. Okay, we could be brainstorm, although that is another kind of metaphor, but let's leave that still. What else could we use to say come up with? Hey, come up with a plan for this problem. Jack? Yeah, just like think. Think of a plan. Good. What else? Luke? That's a good one is create. Create a plan. Good. What else? Come up with more things, right? <laughs> How about invent? Um, how about imagine? Okay, this gets to the point. So idioms 
are these kind of these metaphoric phrases, these metaphor phrases that we use without even thinking about them. They've become cliche. Come up with, think about like what that means when you break it down literally. Come like, uh, you know, move from over there to over here with, like, let's do this together and up, opposite of down. It's like a random mixture of different prepositions that we've put together to mean these things. And the problem with idioms is that it could be any of these things. It could be articulate, say out loud, which is way different than create. So what I'm going to have you do for this first part is all you have to worry about right now is writing a single word for each of these phrases. So when you look up at made up of, you're going to write a single word that literally means made up of. Does that make sense? Kind of. Okay, do this with a partner. Um, but both of you, well, no, only one of you needs to write it down. Okay. Yeah. Do it with a partner. Hi. Up would be okay. Yeah. What's bring about? Bring about means to like start or cause. So I just gave you two. Okay. <laughs> I should have said make something happen. Do you guys know what swear off means? Yeah. Like I swore off cigarettes or I, I swore off swearing <laughs> for Lent. <laughs> Yeah. 
were scary, but now I've seen the light. this I have to go up and stand in the front so you're just hopefully can catch the
other cultures to understand language, even if they do speak English. And Australia always has the best language. Okay. Basically, trust me. Okay, so if, to wrap it up about idioms, we're going to avoid them because they make our meaning unclear, they have multiple meanings, they cause unnecessary clutter because you're using a bunch of words where one will do, um, and they're too informal. So from now on in our writing, we're going to try really hard to avoid idioms. So let's see if we can find them. Uh, so this is a paragraph I wrote with as many idioms as I could. What? And I just numbered the sentences. Don't worry about the numbers. Try and count how many idioms you can find in this paragraph. I see 17 technically. A couple of those I wouldn't necessarily care about in the right because they are just so close to the literal, but also it could be eight. <laughs> Let's look at them uh, one by one. So, one day, Ms. Borak, I wrote this uh, my first year, it wasn't the doctor. One day, Ms. Borak came up with a project for her class that would help her students get back to basics. There's two idioms there. Where are they? Came up with, we know that one, and what's the other one? Back to basics, yeah. Uh, you're not really going anywhere, and you don't have to go back anywhere. So that's an idiom. She knew that the class could cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time if only they would put on their thinking caps and crank out some great work. So there's three there. Where's the first one? Eight, cover, a cover, cover a lot of ground. Thinking caps. Crank out. Good. She told her class to hit the books and find ten idioms. Where's the Where's the idiom? Good. Okay, Rebecca brainstormed a list of potential idioms she might find. There's one there. So brainstorm technically is. That's not one that I would say you can't use because at this point, brainstorm has found its way to our dictionary. We all sort of like use that as an actual noun to describe a process. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mark it if you could use that one. She was determined to pass this assignment with flying colors. What's the idiom? Flying colors. What does that even mean? Do we know where that comes from? Me like maybe like victory because you're like flying your flag. I don't know. Anyway, they all have some sort of victory. Carlos tried to think outside the box by finding language that really paints the picture. There's two right there. Outside the box. Outside the box. Painted a picture. Just so you guys know, that is my least favorite idiom of all time. From now on, when you write paint a picture in your paper, I'm gonna cross it out and I'm gonna write no with a frowny face next to it because I hate it so much. You know how teachers just have those have those like pet peeves? That's what I'm like. Why do you hate it? I think it's because I do rhetorical analysis, and so everyone when they're talking about imagery and rhetorical analysis, they'll say this image really paints the picture, and then they'll just move on and they won't tell you what the picture actually is. Um, so it just bothers me. <laughs> If you are looking at a literal painting of a picture, you can say that the author, the, the author of this picture painted the picture. But otherwise, writers aren't painting pictures. They're using words to convey, uh, you know, emotional responses to descriptions. All right, number seven. Mary and Jason teamed up together. Shh. Put their thinking caps on and really paid attention to the language in the book. There's three there. Teamed up together. What could be a single word that you could use there instead? You could say worked together. You could say collaborated. Um, there's lots of ways. The up there is totally unnecessary. Okay. Put their thinking caps on is obviously an idiom, right? And then where's the third? 
paid attention is technically a, technically an idiom. That is not one that I would mark either. I feel like that one is so close to being the goal. By and by, Mrs. Borup asked for a show of hands and took down a list of idioms. There's three there. By and by, that does not mean anything. But also, I haven't seen a student use that before, so to now say that transition is it. Yeah, show, show of hands and took down a list of idioms. Yep. And took down is a really good example of an idiom that like causes confusion because to take someone down actually does have like a literal meaning. You know, like it could be like a security guard taking down a suspect, but it also could be someone <laughs> writing something. Um, and you're asking your reader to figure that out based on context. And obviously it's easy to figure that out, but it's just one more step they have to do. She felt that her students really hit this assignment out of the park. Obviously that's an idiom. And this last one is, is uh, questionable. Everyone got an A for effort. That is a cliche and it could be an idiom that she doesn't mean it. But also some teachers give A's just for putting in effort. So it technically could be literal. And uh, I don't know what, I, I'm not in this board of I don't know. I didn't A's for effort. Good point. That's a good point. You actually earn an A, right? It should say earn an A for effort. Good point. In discovery, the teachers return to the floor with their flags and colors, raise their will, and sit in front of the chip that I don't know. That makes sense. That's awesome. Thank you. I love learning like that. Though. All right, so here's what you're going to do you wrote a paragraph at the beginning of class, right? You wrote it before we talked about idioms. So you're going to exchange your paragraph with someone. And Allie will write the paragraph. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to read your partner. Does everyone have someone's paragraph in front of them that is not theirs? So you're going to read their paragraph and you're going to circle any idioms that you find. And if you have questions about what is an idiom and what is not, I, I can ask. Um, uh, So for you working at home, you're going to find idioms in your own writing now and circle them. And so when you submit a picture, I want to see that you have circled some idioms, if you have any. Sometimes, I mean, some people don't write with idioms at all. Oh, circle them where they are. 
Okay, how'd you do? Some people, they are just naturally very literal writers. They don't rely on idioms that much. I am not one of those people. Seems like Sophia is also not one of those people. <laughs> yeah, sometimes some of us like, yeah, like I do that too. Um, and so, so it's sometimes really hard to get out of that habit and don't get hung up on this idea as you are writing your first draft. Hung up on, see, I do it constantly. Hung up on this idea as an idiom. Um, as you're writing a first draft, this isn't at the forefront of your mind. This is stuff for second draft, third draft, because if, you, if you're obsessed with it, it's gonna slow down your progress so much. But before you turn something in now, go through, look for idioms and change those to literal, literal meanings. It's gonna help your writing, not just your grammar, but also your precision. So we're gonna try, we're gonna try writing a paragraph now with no idioms from the beginning. So I wanna show you, like it can be slow, but I do wanna show you how this works. So you're gonna argue now the opposite of the paragraph that you just wrote about disobedience. So does that, does anyone have questions about what that would mean for their paragraph to argue the opposite? Okay, sometimes that can be hard because your paragraph didn't have a strong position. Okay, this sounds good. So you're gonna take a space underneath the one that you wrote before, and you're gonna try and write a paragraph that argues the opposite. And this time you're gonna try and write with zero idioms. Okay, and this time I'm only gonna give you um, maybe seven or eight minutes. I'm a faster one. No, you can have 10 still. Okay. All right, so 10 minutes for all of the opposite of what you just wrote in there. How do I write against the point that's so well? Is your paragraph so amazing? Like, how are you going to? No, no, how do I write against this point? Yeah. Oh. Um, if we all started just with this idea of being disobedient to everything, I don't think we could really work together as communities, right? So you can think about what the value of like yeah, some concession. Yeah. yeah. You know, cooperation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, sh writing a paragraph that is the opposite. JJ, write your paragraph.
Five more minutes to write your paragraph. It sounds like it wouldn't be yeah. smoother to watch the truth. Okay. 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 Who's finished their paragraph? Raise your hand if you've finished it. Okay, wrap up the sentence you're on, however first far you got. All right, one more time, you're going to give that paragraph to your partner and check to see if they really did avoid idiom. Okay, so wherever you got with this, just change now and check to see if there's any
How did they do? Any idiots? Maybe so is one. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Here, let me get your attention. Over here. Okay. Did you feel, and honest answer, did you feel like your writing was better without the idioms, or did you feel like it was such a stretch that it became cluttered and weird? Yeah, you like it? It was yeah. clear, but it was hard to disregard because it's hard to explain that. Okay, that makes sense because you're like really searching for this precision and you don't get to have that flow of ideas. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm spending too much time talking about it instead of like Yeah. Okay, so if that was the case for you, again, remember this is a second draft type thing. You you write naturally, then go back and try and find that precision because I, I agree, it can really slow you down. And I don't want you to get to the point where you're like looking at a screen afraid to write something. So I'm going to call you out for idioms. But from now on in your writing, I'm going to circle idioms and I'm going to I'm going to write an eye to the side so that you're aware of it and it's going to hurt. I mean. It, I grade things holistically, but if there's too many idioms, that hurts your score because I'm looking for that literal quality. Okay. Any questions? Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes, but keep thinking about that graded essay because those are coming up pretty soon, October 4th.